Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Wind Calls the Heart. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jax, and I like Wind Calls the Heart. I'm Dan, and two years ago I called Team Nathan. Just saying, this is the Deck, Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. Brandon and friends host his podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Wow, wow, wow. Hello. Mm-hmm. Double Deckers. Yeah. Hardies. Yeah. Randos. Randos. <laughs> Great to be here today. I mean, it's a big week. It's a big week for a number of reasons. I, I think first and foremost, we have to get out of the way first. Jax was right. Jax hit the nail on the head. Oh, hold on. She was right. Oh, we have to say that. For, I want to be like, I like, like, you know, you want to give people the credit. They were, she, she was right. I, I appreciate that. But as you said in in our intro, yes. you've been right for even longer. Well, so different like right. But yeah, I mean, I you know, you know, I, I did say it all the way back. I was listening to the best of and it comes up on the best of and I was it like, does. man, hearing hearing called um, that 23 episodes ago, huh? Hearing the journey of of last season was was really fun. Yeah, to, I'm not there hear yet. It, to hear it, hear yeah, it, hear it all happen. Um, also, got to get this out of the way, Ralph. We are gonna get back to you. I Ralph, like he keeps asking, and we're like, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. Yeah, we are gonna get back to you. There's just so it's many just, other things we would rather do, but, and but we will get back. What to you, Ralph. we're doing, like it's very incon. Ralph, it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient what he's asking. We're helping him out, right? And so, yeah, we're gonna get there. We just can't get there right now. It's a big week. It's a big Ralph. week. Jax, how are you, pal? I'm I'm great. How do I know who Ralph is? You should. Yeah, I think we all know. Who, we yeah. all know. A- oh Ralph. my god! Did you, already, did you already block him? I mean, I, we, a lot of our guests, a lot of our regular Hello, hosts, block. do block Ralph. <laughs> That's um, not true. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't even get to, maybe he's sitting in my inbox and I don't even know he's there. Could be that. <laughs> that he is goes a, to a completely different folder. So yes. what's the latest between um you and Ted? Ted. <laughs> we haven't yeah, talked about so Ted I, in a long time. That's right. Yeah, we haven't. And I'm I'm gonna be honest, we're not currently in communication. Oh my goodness. Um yeah, he, uh, he Ted's, your <laughs> Ted's your Ralph. Ted's your Ralph. Ted's your Ralph. Well, he decided not to fly me back and forth this year. He said he would foot the bill for Bramble Fest, but then you guys offered to do it. And <laughs> yeah, I, I love how weird. in the middle of your improv, you realized that you were taking credit away from us paying for your travel. And you were like, I can't do that to the boys, even though we would have been totally fine with it. I, would you think we're going to pipe up and go, uh, Jax, <laughs> you're on United out of Newark. Uh, and that those $200, we will not get back. <laughs> you did get me a very nice flight and i can't credit it to ted from your I favorite airport i i you know i love newark <laughs> that's actually i'm going to la tomorrow i'm flying out of newark i guess yeah. it's just my Shout airport out. that's god's airport <laughs> yeah, it, is. it is good food options good but we're not we're no longer in communication i did get a weird email from his wife and i just decided it's better to let it lie yeah yeah probably best do you know, yeah. uh, let me ask you this, you know, in uh, LaGuardia and JFK, now all the food is streamlined to where you sit down and you order basically the same food, no matter what terminal you're in. At least that yeah. was, but is Newark not like that anymore? Newark's not like uh, that. See, it's a real, it's a real experience. If I knew I go... had to sit in Newark, one of those three airports, the, what they've done at JFK and LaGuardia, like it sucks. It's a crime. Like yes. I don't want sit to down, for, yes. order the no, dumb don't. thing and it's through like, the I, dumb app. I paid twenty eight dollars for a cheeseburger that's bad. Like I, I would rather go to a real, chain restaurant stuff. that I that I know. One hundred percent. I also like even if the food that I want is not in the terminal that I'm in. I like being excited or disappointed by that. Like I want that to be I, the experience. I, I Re- Rena, sa- Rena says, don't we all fly out of Newark? It's so much better than wow. the LaGuardia and JFK now. Hi, Rena. She knows. Jax, well, I weirdly like agree with you on that. Right? There's something about going to an airport going, I'm going to get some food there and then either being pleasantly delighted by your options or there's something about rolling the dice and being like, well, <laughs> exactly. you know, we rolled snake eyes, but we, we had a chance for a Qdoba. 
You know, well, I think we, we would all agree. It was there. We could have gotten yeah. one. We didn't know. I think we would all agree the Smash Burger in Terminal C of Charlotte I, is the is the perfect full credit, the to, perfect airplane uh, airport uh, full restaurant. Credit to producer Aaron Shea. It's Dude. perfect. We it was was it nine in the morning yet? I think it was like seven in the morning. It is the perfect. And she was like, "We should get Smash Burgers from this place called." Please, yeah, unmute her. It's we called Smash Burger. It's called Smash Burger. So what happened is we had flown from Greenville to Charlotte. It's super early. We're on our way to New York. We turn the corner, and there is a giant, like, floor-to-ceiling poster of the Smash Burger. <laughs> it looked amazing, and I was like, guys, I know it's like 8 a.m., but that's what I want. And we all, they were open. We got, was it Parmesan or truffle fries or something? I was fully prepared oh. to take one bite of this burger and be like, I wasted $20, whatever. This burger can't it be good enough for me to eat. It was magical. And it was delightful. I've had it since And they were serving too. it in. Yeah, I've had it there. Yeah. I've had it, I've open, had it since. There was a line for burgers. It was a great life choice. It's been great both times. You, you had it again. I've had it since, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have, Brian. Brian yeah, I have. get one, and that's on him. Yeah. Yeah, well, of course he didn't. Yeah, he's on whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've all seen him shirtless, and we will again. Yeah, so. we will. We will, we will again. again. Is he taking off his shirt this year? He's literally it's, told me he won't under any circumstances. That's what he's told me. I mean, that's, I didn't know that. Is that because he was embarrassed, or like he I felt think, bad because he made the rest of us look I bad? Think Bri likes to live under the radar. I think he yeah. likes to live under the radar a little bit, and I think he was like, I'm, "There's no way." But maybe he, it's a "Don't make me sing" bit. Maybe right. he's doing <laughs> that. So that we we will continue to ask. Dear diary, I really <laughs> hope somebody asks me to take right, yes. my shirt off today. I'm worth one thing in this life. <laughs> if they don't ask me to go shirtless at Bramble Fest, I, I don't think, think I can live I, another day. I think that's what I love this me. voice that we're both doing for Brian and his diary. <laughs> Dear diary. That's what rubs me the wrong way about Ralph, though, is that's totally yeah. how he operates. He is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pisses me off, man. Yeah, he got just a bruise tattoo too, which is weird. Like, like why would you get just a bruise tattooed on you? Yeah. That's a weird th- like on your ribs. It's just a giant. But why did he do that? Yeah. Well, he wants people to ask about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask about my tattoo. Me nuts. Yeah, it was a kickboxing accident. Yeah, and he put like you can <laughs> when he reaches up, you can yeah. see a little up. He's gr- so he gr- annoying. And he groans every yes. time. He's like, oh, man. It's so annoying. Like, Ralph, you've been doing this bit for five years, dude. We know it's not real. Come on, Ralph. <laughs> mm. Run to you is the name of the episode. He always gets a toothpick on the way into the restaurant. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I like, know he's, he's that about. guy. Like, we're all there at the hostess station. We're about to sit down, and he gets a toothpick. And he picks it all meal. All meal. Oh, he's talking to all you. All meal. The worst human being. And we'll, we'll oca- get to you, Ralph. We'll get to you. And we'll occasionally, like, if he takes a big bite, go, uh. As if, like, somehow that's affecting the fake bruise. Yeah. Like, somehow eating a big bite would make your but, yeah, he hypothetical bruise here with his on your rib. I don't understand. We'll get to you. He chooses death metal at karaoke. Like, we'll who get chooses... You. He chooses death metal at karaoke. It sounds like he a good time. Well, though. He sounds yeah, he like does a good time. That's the thing that pisses me off. Yeah. Is yeah. he pulls it off. Yeah. Yeah. He's like anti Brian, where he's like showing you that he's good at it, but he actually has the talent to back it up. And we just hate yeah. Ralph. I don't know. Uh, June 16th, uh, 2020. Bruce tattoo, guys. I don't care. <laughs> what how a little. You are. What a little. Bruce that's too tattoo? much. Yes. Like this. This is why people are listening, by the way. Go ahead. The town is a buzz about the resort. Uh, and all that has transpired with it not being the resort you said anymore. Transpired like it was two words. Yeah, transpired. Transpired. Uh, Rosemary tells Elizabeth that she needs to hurry things along with Nathan. She's going too slow. Fair. What? Bill then tells Nathan the same thing. It was at this point that I think to myself, something might be happening in this episode. Uh, uh, Randall Rockwell comes into town to talk to Rosemary because he thinks that there's more to this story about why the resort's not happening and the shooting and all of that stuff. And Rosemary agrees, and they agree that they're going to work together on this story. They're going to put their heads together, <laughs> yes. and they're going to get to work on this. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's had a long day. <laughs> Yeah, Lucas's New Orleans boo thing comes to talk to him again, even though he told her to kick rocks. May tells Frickham that her brother is coming into town. So he decides, since you got family coming into town, I'm going to propose now. I'm going to propose to you now, and then we'll get married then. You know, we don't know when they're going to come yeah. back into town. So let's, yeah. 
I want you to know. And so they're going to get so married. It's your brother. This is the only man around. It's the patriarch. I, I got to ask him. I was begging for a proposal this season. We got you it. You got it. We got it. Not from the couple I cared about, Ned but yeah. And Florence. I think it's Florence. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hickam and Mesu. Everybody. Everybody, everybody in Hope Valley moves at the proper speed aside, aside from, from Elizabeth. Elizabeth and whoever she's yeah. into. Uh, <laughs> Jeanette tells Lucas that she warned him that declining the deal might make Shaw mad, and he's on his way over here now. Shaw's. So Gowan gets all the important males of Hope Valley together to go. And make sure that nobody enters Hope Valley. All the they don't want males and Hickam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so they go uh, try to find out like well, where's this guy coming from. Once uh, they leave the room, Jeanette tries to kiss Lucas, and he's like, "No, thank you, madam," and then tells him to st- uh, tells her to stay put. Uh, he hops on a horse and. Uh... <coughs> Did you say horse? Horse. Oh, sorry. I was really in. No problem, bud. The, what you're doing. I'm a big, I'm a big hearty. Yeah, I know you are. I love the hearties. You I know, know who I think Elizabeth should end up with. Who's that? My pants. Oh. Sounded dirty. <laughs> oh, no. Can't say that. Certainly can't. Rig got out of hand. I didn't we cut can that. We can cut it. <laughs> he, uh, so anyway, any whom, um, he hops on his horse and uh, she goes outside and uses the sun to uh, make a little light to the mirror and gives a signal to somebody hanging out in the woods that all the all the important males miss. They yes, didn't see the guy in the woods. Uh, see uh, Rosemary in the and Randall discuss Lucas's case, and Rosemary learns that Randall never met, doesn't even know who his source is. Um, but you know, I did. I was able to vet the information with all the Mounties. Uh, but you know, the Mounties were due. And there's you can't blame this on me. I'm not uh, at fault. Rosemary is now wondering whether or not the source could be uh, the shooter it's, uh, himself to throw him off the scent. Randall is then is like, well, the, the, the shooter, the source actually sent me a letter not too long ago urging me to, sh- uh, to shut, shut my mouth. And this is when he becomes an expert in the handwriting. Yes. <laughs> they then, she then, they, they look at this letter and Rosemary's like, hold on one second. And then they compare it to the handwriting of Jeanette and they realize that it is the same handwriting. So she goes to warn Lucas, but gets stopped by Jeanette. It's at this point that Shaw, we think Shaw, walks in and holds Rosemary at gunpoint. Then Elizabeth walks in. Double gunpoint. Uh Uh-oh. Classic Elizabeth being held at gunpoint again. Uh, Randall goes to find Lucas, which he uh, does finally out in the woods. And uh, he fills them in on what they have found. They put it all together. There is no Shaw. Jeanette is Shaw. So Lucas walks in and is like, honey, I'm home. Um, then Nathan crawls through the window. Bill comes through the front door and um, takes the guy's gun that the, that it's not Shaw, but we thought it was Shaw, but it's the guy. Takes that gun, but then... He, the guy, uh, uh, takes Elizabeth up the stairs. Now a saloon surrounded by Mounties, and uh, Nathan runs up the stairs to try to save Elizabeth, um, and is able to like save her by pushing her off the balcony. But they fall in hay. They yeah, roll yeah, around. Yeah, they yeah. roll around well, in the give hay. Each other a like, yeah, let's they let's roll let's around they in the hay. Roll in the hay. That's exactly right. The Mounties win and arrest the baddies. And you know, Jeanette's like. I loved you, and you know, and you didn't love me, so I had to do this, and I could, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? And that, my friends, was when. Co- no, nope, there's more. The episode ends when Nathan comes to see Elizabeth later that night, and she tells him how much she likes him, and how he uh, feels like home to her, and how uh, good looking he is in the in the red and in the suspenders, unbuttoned. <laughs> She says, I'm in love with you. He says nothing, but just walks up to her and kisses her hard. Kisses her hard. And then he says, I've never stopped loving you. And they kiss some more. And that, my friends, was When Calls the Heart, season 11. 11 is 11. Run to you. Sorry, I got it. We did it. We did do it. 
We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to break this episode down here on Deck Deck the the Hallmark. Hallmark. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are talking about Wind Calls the Heart Season 11, Episode 11, the penultimate episode of Season 11. Mm. Run to you. Feel like something was supposed to happen this week. Uh, seems like it was yeah. promised. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the hot take. It is where we share exactly how we felt about this movie. Big episode. Big hot takes, I'm sure. Jax, what would you think? Um, This episode read to me, and I mean this is a compliment oh, because I go. think fan fiction is very often better than the actual source material itself, but it read like Team Nathan fan fiction. Yes. Right? Down Didn't to it? the surge and suspenders. Yeah. Exactly. It was like she had undone everything that had happened with Lucas. And look, like, I'm not saying that fear based wasn't a part of it. I think it could be. But it really discounted everything she had with Lucas in a way that was kind of heartbreaking um, to me. Because you can also love two people at the same time and also be scared and all these things. But it it wasn't. So so that was a little bit like, oh, however, I will say that kiss worth waiting for the hands on the back owie owie baby wow yeah was i didn't really like the good? close-up on the hands i found it, it to be weird, weird like it was a you weird close-up of him like clasping his own hands together <laughs> you liked it well, it's not a close-up of him pulling her closer well, he just does it, this like he's sitting at a poker table with a great hand he, it <laughs> he's made, just like ready to I'll, twiddle his thumbs can i can i say you guys are not wrong but what it evoked I'm just going to be candid. What it evoked in me is thinking of their genitals being pressed together. His hands. Yes. Doing I this. Because it was like the way. Oh my gosh. I think I have to it. go be somewhere. I, <laughs> I no longer want to do this. I can't. I don't know how you got there, Jax. I, can't I don't believe know. We didn't think about their Dude, genitals. I did. I said it, but you must have missed it. Ralph wasn't. Ralph's the one that said it. Ralph did say He's that. like, oh, that's their genitals. <laughs> You, I couldn't think of anything else. Like that when he did that, I was like, "Oh, they're really like now they're like, uh, like but it really." Was just his hand touching his hand. Yeah, but he was. I think he was pushing her towards. I him. don't think so. I I literally think it just was this. But like it was like all in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I, it wasn't. The hallmark is now TV MA. Apparently. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had a the record straight i i, I wonder i mean could anyone else how, like every feel. time nathan says anything to elizabeth elizabeth looks like she's having a full experience i guess <laughs> i guess that those those hands could be the wind calls the heart version of sex i guess it's a lot but i, I guess dan thank you for calling it the full experience that's oh the, the classy way that i will refer to it from here on out because she she does and i will tell you the other moment in this that gave me the full experience is when Jeanette and Lucas go all Mr. and Mrs. Smith and they hug after she doesn't shoot him. I was like, okay, now this is where I'm really, we're cooking with gas here. I thought it was an exciting episode. And then of course, May, May and Frickham got engaged and that was sweet. If not a little rushed. Um, <laughs> You know, first of all, I appreciate this about you because you guys always get when the patriarchy is hard at work. However, I actually just thought this was Hickam being like, you got no family and this is the only time someone you know was going to roll into town. I was like, okay, sure, let's do it. Also, we need a wedding this As week. soon as he was like, so your brother's coming to town, in my head I was like, of course he's going to wait for some some dude in her life. Like, I immediately was like, what? Does that have to do with anything? I, well, I think I think she doesn't have anybody else. Yeah, which is really sad. That is sad. He, like so that that was yeah. There was something about it that he's like, there's no one else in your. And look, we're all in the smog of patriarchy. But I would say of all the the, yeah. the men in this episode, which I loved how you were um, referring to them as uh, characterizing them. What did you say, Brian? All the important the, men in town. All the important all the, men in town. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like Hickam is least caught up in the smog of the patriarchy. But yes, it was it was an not action net episode. out there. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? I and I even more excited than I was for the kiss, which I was, I was excited to hear Brand's reaction. So I can't wait to hear your hot take, Brand. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, yeah, it was a really, uh, it was a, it was a good kiss. Um, and now that I know that their genitals were touching, like it, it's hard. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it takes it a, like a, to a totally different level. That's right. Um, yeah, I think overall, was I surprised that Jeanette was Shaw? No, no, it wasn't because it definitely wasn't going to be whoever that guy was. The guy that had one line. Yeah, it definitely yeah. wasn't going to be that guy. So it, it made sense. Um, a couple things that I would have liked to have happened in this episode. One, I would have liked for Jeanette to shoot Lucas. I would have liked for it to just happen. I would have liked to uh, for that to happen. Lucas I has also, no purpose now. No, he doesn't. None. No. And I, I, I would have liked for that to happen. Two, I would have liked for Frickham to get shot as well. And I thought it was going to happen. I thought I once, love how once you continually have a, a, a ever renewing hope in this show. Once, once right Frickham proposed, and I found out the next scene that there was a threat into town, and Frickham volunteered to be tribute. I thought, great, yes, Frickham's going to get shot, and it's finally, finally, something exciting is going to happen, and we're going to do some stuff, and that didn't happen. Uh, so I was disappointed. Was the kiss everything that I hoped it would be? Of course. Of course it was. Um, but the over the the big mystery of the season, yeah, bit of a bit of a dud, bit of a letdown, and that's unfortunate. But the kiss was great. Uh, there's gonna be many more, many more kisses, hopefully. Many uh, more kisses. Many more kisses, hopefully. And so, um, wedding next episode. <laughs> wedding next episode is my understanding. Yes, uh, uh, wedding next episode. Let's let's uh, let's Dan. Let's you and I both give our best Elizabeth face. Okay. When uh, when Nathan does anything, okay. okay. Here I go. Here you I wanna, go. Who are we going first? You. Uh, you go first. You all, right, go first. all right. You ready? You oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Okay, okay. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> are you getting shot? How is that? Who won? Who, who won? won, Jack? Those were those were both. Uh, those were both really good. Really good. I would say I would split the difference a little bit yeah. more okay. and meet in the middle. All right, Jax, um, am I allowed I like to ask you? Can, you? can you go or can you sure. keep it PG? Okay. Yeah. Here well, we you have to say something to me that I can react to. Or wait, are we closing <laughs> a window? Uh, sh- no, I'll, I'll, I'll just I, I I'll say it, something. I got it. I got it. Go, go full on her. Though. Jax, I'd never stop loving you. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh dear God! Yeah, we can't air that. We can't air that. <laughs> Did that work? Follow that was, TV slash yeah. DTH. That was it. That was no. it. You are watching on Philo. What are you doing? You really you doing? that really that is like that's what that's she does. Actually, exactly what she does. It's unbelievable. It, it's. I'm happy that she gets to have the whole experience <laughs> so many times. Yeah. Time. <laughs> oh man, mm. uh, Dan, what do you think? Yeah, so back in season eight, in the finale, I believe uh, Lucas lights every candle on the West Coast, uh, and Elizabeth says that she chooses him, and then they kiss very passionately. Like, the Team Nathan fans were upset because they felt like the show was too racy. That's how passionately they kissed in that. And during that scene, I remember we were all recording that here in, yeah, that Greenville. I remember thinking, boy, what a great setup for her and Nathan to kiss in three three years. I, I think we all were, right? I think we all knew. 100%. You saw, the, yes, we, and we yes. talked about it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. saw the kiss and we thought, it's just, yeah, she's yeah. just, a, it, Team she's Nathan's thinking it. upset now, but yeah. they just had to make it look good. It was clear that Elizabeth wasn't into it. That's right. It was I saw that kiss. By that 60 second long kiss. And, I, and we said. With all the, can- we were like, this is a setup. Fake. It's a f- yeah, boo. Fake. Yeah. It was clear, clear that three years later, this is where we were. Clear as crystal. Um, look, the kiss is great. The, they did a great job. The chemistry was there. The kiss was there. Uh, the rest of this this episode. Genitals, there. Yeah, genitals, there. The rest of this episode and this season has been kind of a disaster. Uh, the, the murder mystery is so far off the rails at this point. I'll get to it my way. What? But to think you can just do this thing where she's been him the whole time is absurd it's crazy we called that she was 
calling the shots weeks ago on this podcast. It took no work at all. Um, that was miserable. Lucas, there's no reason for him to be in town. There's nothing he really did this season aside from resort yes, resort no. Um, Hickam and Mesu, great. God bless you. Uh, kind of a downer of an episode, but I, I got to be honest. When Jack said the fan fiction thing, that's when it really all clicked in for me. I was trying to figure out what about Elizabeth's love declaration and some of the early, like the earlier scenes, like Rosemary talking to Elizabeth, like you've waited to, like every scene talking about those two characters, it felt like one of our friend, podcast friends would have written it. Like it felt like something that I'm not used to hearing on this program. And then as soon as you said fan fiction, like that's all, it clicked in perfectly. That's all I can think of. Her declaration of love was so far removed from any dialogue I've ever heard in this show before. It was a riot. It was like spit take laughing for me. Um, but the kiss worked and it's a moment a lot of people have been waiting for. So I'm thrilled for them. And as my shirt says, I have always, always we, been, is that, oh, you can we get in a little bit, can we get in a little, get in a little bit tighter there? There you go. You see that? Always, always team, team Nathan. Nathan. I never doubted it for a second, and wow. I need you guys to know that. Philo.tv slash DTH. So uh, here we are. We did it. We got one episode left. We've set it up for a big finale of nothing. There is nothing they can do in this finale. I'll save it for my feels. Go. Um, I wanted to see like if I typed in write a monologue that Elizabeth would say to Nathan and when calls the heart, when she finally tells him that she loves him into AI and like what would pop out. And, um, it's not quite as on, on the nose as, what as, they said. as, as what the fanfic, uh, would be. I've been afraid to admit this to myself and to you afraid of what it might mean and of the changes that it would bring, but I can't deny it any longer. Nathan, I love you. I love you more than words can say. You are the one who makes my heart feel full. and You make me believe in the possibility of a beautiful future. I don't know what lies ahead of us, but I do know that I want to face it with you. I want to be by your side to share in your joy and your sorrows, to build a life together that is filled with love and happiness. Nathan, you are my heart's true desire. Man, that's better than what they wrote. It's better than what they wrote. Ran, you delivered that really well. Thanks. Again, you can give me pointers. I'm I basically was a okay. child. <laughs> no. <laughs> what would you say to your uh, child actors there? Um, Brian, that was so great. Okay, uh -huh. let's, and then I would like work it and I'd say, just the little moment when you said, I don't know what lies, and uh -huh. then you paused. I thought you were going to talk about something that lied. So let's just kind of string that together. Yeah. Uh -huh. He does and that all that the part time, again. Jack. That's I, just how he reads. I, um, <laughs> when he ends the line, he ends the read. <laughs> the other day, I uh, I lied. I lied to my mom. Cool, The other dude. day. <laughs> this I was is... genuinely, I thought it was good, Bran. Thanks, Jax. Uh, aside from all the feels, we're talking about what in this movie gave or show episode of it, we got uh, it. gave us feels. Uh, Jax. So look, yes, we're talking about this monologue, this fanfic, but you see Craco is a Juilliard train actor. Like she is delivering yeah. it. She is giving it. Yes. She's doing that thing where like you see those tears that are in her eyes, but she's holding them back and there's a well of emotion. She killed it. It was awesome. Um, you know, I I feel like, if I'm being honest, that was probably kind of it for me. Like, the the, the, yeah. the, the the Jeanette and Lucas thing that I already said was, like, sexy feels, and I talked about that up top, so yes. But um, I do think that it, it did come together very nicely with this beautiful monologue, uh, and I am really glad that they kissed. Uh, because it's been a long time coming, and I love to be right. We are like, like, playfully, like, actually praising Aaron Krako. Like, I and and she knows that. Like, they have thrown so much at this poor character mm -hmm. in eleven years. <laughs> it doesn't make a lick of sense, and she always delivers. Always, yeah. it doesn't matter. 
There is no hint of satire anywhere. Like she so is good. just absolutely delivering every time they ask her to do anything, and her character's tied in knots. Like yeah. it is like doesn't make. It's just sense. like me. What I just did. Yeah, yeah. Very. I mean, not as yeah. good as that. Yeah. She could take a few notes. A but, few notes, you know, at least. Yeah. You, you trained in Julie's yard. Julie, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I understand? It's, it's, it's crazy. It's really there. tough to get in there. It is also, not... Brands was, a, Brands was a cold read. Aaron yeah. had time with That's it. Right. That's right. They That's haven't true. mowed that lawn in years. No. Julie's yard's tough, it's man. It's crazy. You get lost in there. Yeah. Um. So the scene where they jump, the, he like pushes her and jumps off the side and lands in the hay. Um. I like got I got premature feels. Uh, because when, when that, when they land, when I see that they landed in the hay, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a great moment. And then I ended up just kind of being let down because they just kind of like wake up. Like, I don't you like call they, those they, disappointing they, feels is all you would say there. What's wrong with what I said? You said premature feels. Yeah. Feels before I had feels to yep. have them. Yes. So they, but uh, they didn't, they weren't earned feels. Got it. Great. Once I found, once I saw the scene play yeah. out, the feels went away. Okay. Premature feels. Okay. Um, they they come to and they look at each other and they just kind of get off the hay. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be like maybe they like reach over and hold hands for a minute or something. Like I thought there was going to be more to the hay scene than what we got. Um, and I'll get more into the the hay in, in my wait what because it's also like insane that it happens. Yeah. But I thought that when that when I see them wake up in the in the hay, I thought we were going to get more of a uh, of a of a moment. In fact, but, but it didn't happen. There's so little of a moment there that when they you look at each other, that's it. when they show a close up on Nathan's face, it looks like he has been sound asleep. <laughs> Am <laughs> I wrong, like Jax? Did you see that asleep. happen and go, "Oh yeah, we're getting some good here"? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I thought I thought they might kiss there. I thought, yeah. But I thought at, at the point, very least they're gonna hold like they're gonna hold hands and just lay there for a second and then yeah, they're lucky stars. Sure. At best, we'll get a full kiss, and we didn't get yeah. that. Like the like when you when you look at each other and you realize oh my gosh this guy just freaking yeah pushed me off of a balcony and held me and made me land and hey like I thought it was gonna be a kiss. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh can't believe that this was the penultimate episode and not the ultimate episode. What could they possibly wedding wedding wedding? They're not all right. Proposal? If, if they did a wedding, and, all right, so you have them for literal years not kiss, and he's going to propose the next episode? We would agree there's no point for him not to, right? I would agree with that. Like, but you've been, you've clearly, you've clearly waited they, longer than you needed to. Now I have said okay. all the things. You make me feel safe, blah, 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 all this stuff. Let's just go ahead, and I'm just going to go ahead and propose. Now that we've gotten that, that out of the way, let's just do this thing. I, I don't disagree, but... She kissed, they, they got to do it. She kissed Mountie Jack, and the, and he proposes years later. She kissed Lucas. He proposes a full season later, which I think is over a year. She kisses Nathan. Propose the next episode. I think though, like of the three instances, this would be the one where a quick engagement would make sense. Like this has been a very, but very, 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 it, very long. I know time that it coming. makes no sense to compare this with anything in the past of the show because the show has told us time and time again they have no scruples and don't care but i okay maybe they could so get engaged my, tomorrow and this. then forget about the it next episode season. is 42 minutes long and we count every second of that around here 42 minutes long <laughs> what are they gonna do for the other 41 minutes isn't there, it just the may and mike's wedding isn't there, it a full wedding episode there is no resort. We yeah. already know. Oh yeah, we are getting a, a wedding that, episode. You it, think it, it's going to be a wedding? And then no, you, it's it's May. Yeah, it's May. May and they just uh, got engaged. Right, now. they got engaged because yeah. brothers coming well, oh, into town. Oh, sorry, you yeah. guys don't watch the previews. It's the wedding and Fiona's back. Fiona's back. Fiona's back. What? Yeah. Jax, you didn't have to yeah. spoil that you for us. Spoiled it oh, for us. Sorry, guys. Sorry about Dude, that. So she comes back for the wedding. What we have after all of the action in this episode? What we have next week is. A and I'm going to be kind. H and I on the call sheet. <laughs> H and I on the call sheet, and I love them both. H and I on the call sheet are getting married, and at the end of that wedding, Nathan will steal the thunder of that wedding by proposing to Elizabeth in, in privacy. 
That is what we're getting next week. After all of this, yeah. who shot Lucas? Will the resort happen? All we're going to get is the wedding of H and I on the call sheet and a proposal. They're going to be walking. They're going to be. They're going to be walking. He's going to be walking her home, and he's going to be like, "That was really nice." And she was like, "That was really nice." And he's like, "Maybe we should. Maybe we should." Uh, <laughs> do, have be really nice too. <laughs> maybe we should have one of those of our own sometime soon. And she's going to be like, "What are you saying?" And then he's going to get down on one knee, and he's going to be like. You know, they can't do that because you know what I think they're afraid of? I think that they are afraid to have relation to have Elizabeth in a stable marriage. Think about it. It's never happened. Nope. Jack died right after they right. got married. Yeah. He was with Lucas planning the wedding. Like they're gonna want to put off the engagement as long as they can, then have the engagement, then have wedding planning it as makes, long as they can, then have the marriage. Let's just go ahead and start this now. Let's not push the engagement, Brand. Let's go ahead and start this right now. Next season, when calls the heart last season ends with wedding you yeah. never have to do that elizabeth thing you can do this whole yeah. year build up to it and then roll the credits after the bride and groom kiss and we never have to that but if we get a proposal Boom next that, if we get a proposal to end the season you're not having hope that next season's the last season that's not giving you a ton of hope it's getting more you know to all the team Nathan people that quit watching the show after he, she chose Lucas are back. I don't know if you heard. And the, those people that like us don't like us anymore because we now it's serious. When she chose Lucas, it was funny. Now it's serious, Brian. <laughs> More people watch it now than you. Like, I don't know what, like, it's, it's clearly not going anywhere unless the cast doesn't want to go anywhere. Why would they, why would they kill a golden goose? I never mm-hmm. said anything about killing a that's golden true. goose. That's true. That's true. That's right. Don't freaking put words in. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you say wouldn't. that. You wouldn't. I'll, I'll, Silver goose? That's fine. Okay. I don't, I don't have any I don't have any attachment. Yeah. Why don't you start bringing Benny into the mix? Benny? He's our golden goose. Our golden goose is Benny? <laughs> Not the same Benny. We named him Benny when we got him. We named it was our a coincidence. golden goose Benny. Benny, yeah. Do we have a clip of Benny? No, we. Uh, he's a goose. What, do you, what, what would the clip be? <laughs> Sometimes you don't think. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about the way what's and what the hallmarks here on Deck the Hallmark. Benny, I'm a goose. <laughs> Before the break, I heard <laughs> Benny, not our Benny. Yeah, it is our Benny. No. He said, All right, Benny, let me get to Benny. I'm a goose. Benny. Benny. Benny, are you cold? Are you oh, the year? Are you I'm the year guy? Goose. I'm a golden goose. Benny, 2015. So you, yeah. you are the year guy. When I when it was my year, Elizabeth and Jack were a thing. Right. Hey. But Benny, are you a goose? I killed him. I killed the golden goose, and now it's just me, Benny. Benny, Benny, Bo Benny, French fry, Mo Benny. Benny. What do French fries have to do with it? It rhymed. Okay. That's, first of all, it's messed French up. French fry didn't rhyme, and you said French fry mo mini. I don't know French what French fry mo mini. I didn't like for some reason. I, I want thought, many French fries. Do you want just one? Many. Yo, many French fries is Benny. not a bad idea. That's a not a. We'll stay on the air. We'll uh, we'll we'll talk to you after the show. I'm always here if you call me. Benny. Don't I know it? Uh, it's time for the way what is where we talk about what in this episode made us go wait what Jax aside from that just now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no that was the thing of beauty French from um, many <laughs> <laughs> um my two wait what's I have two um when well just the whole idea that the important men are the of the town are out like trying to save people but didn't think to warn any of the women <laughs> is hilarious oh it's but, the best it is like, so what? classic when calls the heart so classic and when elizabeth walks in and sees rosemary and rosemary says run elizabeth instead of elizabeth saying what or huh or looking confused she actually goes straight for the door which is wild like if you're if i walked in the podcast studio and you guys were like jack run and i would just go for the door without being like <laughs> what what's happening um so that was wild and then, which I think Bran alluded to you guys getting into this, I'm sorry, but Nathan taking Elizabeth 
over through a railing up on a high porch is not safer than like trying to be safe around the gun. Like that was, that was wild to me. And honestly, like kind of got me a little mad. It was felt grossly irresponsible and dangerous. Like, and also, honestly, it's so you're pushing someone through a balcony, which would probably hurt a little bit, but then you also, so like the, the hay is in the back of a, a trailer, like, you know, a little bit bigger than this table, but not by a lot. And the size of it are like metal bars. Yeah. And like, so you have to push them off of the balcony, hold her, twist a little bit. Cause yes. you got to like, there's a lot of, a lot of, and, of moving around and things could have gone look, really, really bad. Look, I actually would have been okay with it. Look, the visual was great. It's fun. I would have been okay if something happened and the guy had pushed them over the railing. But the yeah. fact that Nathan led the charge, like, why? And before he I would have been more her in the eyes, yeah, they she's like, yeah, yeah, this is, we're on the <laughs> same page. And then I would have loved if they land and she was like, I thought you were just going to take the gun. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, like, dude, what that would have been world? hilarious. That would have been funny. Yeah. I would have been more okay if the hay, if there was a bunch of hay on the ground or something. The, the fact that it's in the back of a trip, like, so much could have gone wrong. If they land on that metal bar she's paralyzed yeah like at best stuff could have gone real bad real bad yeah it's no, bold it's move. a mess it's a bold move uh, i only got two after the because of the hay afterwards hey, hey. i already talked about it is what i'm trying to say um the one scene with ned in this uh episode he went f- full canadian yeah, they come did. in and they're like when are the phones gonna be fixed oh i don't know uh yeah. just full like he i've never heard he him. was ned yeah he forgot he was ned we were talking to, to 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 the guy uh which i thought was really funny and at the end of this episode you know, they're doing like a montage of like, she's like writing down about how everything is great, blah, blah, blah. And they're showing like all the people from the episode that had, you know, something traumatic going on. Like, hey, here's Lucas. Here's Jeanette. Here's, uh, here's Gowan. And then it just cuts to Joseph and Minnie dancing. And I thought it was so funny because yeah, they don't have any, they don't clue. have any idea about what is happening. <laughs> What's really? happened in Oak Valley? They've just been in the di- they've been in the little diner d- dancing all night. He was uh, just it, finding that nightlight for Lily. It was so funny. It's just like here's all how all these people are dealing with the traumatic events of the night, and then here's two people that are blissfully unaware <laughs> that anything has happened in their sweet town. And I thought it was very funny. Dado, uh, yeah, no one in this entire show decided to come up with a single solitary reason why Lucas is still in town. They've given up that plot entirely. They're not even trying to explain why the governor of a giant province or territory is still in his hometown for the 13th week in a row. And it's crazy. And I'm sure they'll have him there next year. Maybe he'll just stay there and operate from there, and that won't be a problem at all. Um, This whole thing where Jeanette is Shaw... I, I think somewhere in the writer's room, that was probably a good idea. Uh, the problem is is that if Jeanette is Shaw, which is fine, that's the truth, then who's this guy who's with her no matter what? Th- th- this guy, come hell or high water, is working for Jeanette slash Shaw. He is shooting the gun. He's com- you can incriminate him. Does he know? Does this guy know that she is incriminating him beyond repair? And he's just like, yeah, what are we doing next, boss? Like, what is, what is if you have this person, you can't say Jeanette is Shaw. You can say that she, like, made this dude to be Shaw when he's not. But I, I, I just, why is he hanging around her? Where, where are all her Where's all her help? How did she get such a reputation? Like she, we've not heard of her until last episode, to be clear, of Shaw. But Lucas says that Shaw is one of the most, like, wanted criminals this side of the whatever. Like he makes it to be a big deal. And then we see a poster of Shaw, and it says it's a $100 reward. Gosh, even in 1920... $100 $100 is not moving the needle. Uh, that's that's under $2,000 modern day. And I believe it was John Mulaney who's like, in the 1920s, gangsters like told you that it was you, you doing it. Like They would come in and be like, if anyone asks... Tell them, it, yeah, it was JP and the Scoggins gang. Like, this is, like, 
they tell tell him it was Shaw. It's just weird that no one's ever talked to Shaw, and he's the most known criminal ever, but only worth a hundred bucks. I, I man, I got nothing there. I don't that none of that makes any sense yeah, at all. It, it did feel. It felt close though. It felt close. It felt close. It felt like they had circled an idea. And then they're like, hey, like the day of filming, they're like, where did, where did we land on this? And like, yeah. we didn't land on I this. I imagine we circled like, it and we never landed on it. I uh, think we could have, we, uh, you know, if we had, if we were in the room, you know, we, we could have made we it work. Made, we could have, you but, know, because we're really good writers. We, we have yes, a ton yeah. of credits to our name and everybody knows us. And so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I also think, Father TV's on CGH, I also think that. If you wanted to do this where you create a big bad and then swap it for someone we've known for years, hey, win calls a heart. Great idea. How about we get a little of that earlier? How about we start sprinkling that in early in the season? Talk about Shaw. Have somebody get killed or murdered that's just ancillary or just tangential. And then, like, bring Shaw into the discussion. And uh, instead of doing this whole thing with Pike, do it with Shaw. And be like, Shaw hired somebody to kill. Imagine how big the payoff would be if we think it's Shaw the whole time and we build up who Shaw is. And it's like, got him. Shaw is somebody I created. It's actually me. That, that I think really we can all agree the be- the best the best version of this is that Gowan Nathan is shot. Shoots. Well, oh, yeah, yes. of course, yeah. Gowan, if Gowan is, if oh like, my god! So like, imagine imagine like Jeanette's in there and she's holding gun or whatever, and then they're all like god. in a standoff, and Gowan comes in through the back, and it's like everybody put your guns down, and because every like now Dude. now they trust them. And then if and then, Gowan was still bad. This would be it. And then Jeanette, oh. and then Jeanette goes, "What are you doing here, Shaw?" I've said it before. I'll say it again. What you're talking about is a better Isn't TV that good? show. Like, it's the, the, lo- the long redemption arc of Gowan to then flip it and oh, make him bad again would yeah, be... Yeah, and then basically the show becomes a once you're bad, you're always bad show, which is like, wow. <laughs> Man, the philosophical implications there off the charts. Um, the fact that Bill Avery doesn't tell Rosemary about Casimir Shaw coming to town is absolutely unforgivable i get it you're a man and she's not and in hope valley that means that you think you're better you've been working on this with her the whole time you just left her out of a key piece of information that she could help you with and maybe you dummies wouldn't be off in the woods while the inconspicuous dude in the weird hat is standing over there with a gun hey Jax, defend your boy in this episode please no that was a jerk move i cannot believe you did that they've been in cahoots the whole time but also, what is even going on two weeks ago was it he's like i need your brain they needed her brain she's smart she could help you here i don't i don't get it you didn't ask that think- lee coulter and hickam aren't armed you got bill avery and and nathan grant and they're like who should we we ask hickam a guy whose voice still cracks. He's going to come help us yes. out in the woods with no gun when Rosemary could probably crack the case. Yes, and you know he's had half a bottle of champagne and he's a lightweight. Yeah. So he's probably already drunk. Yes. I, I just, this was, it was, it was infuriating enough that they didn't want her brain. But the fact that they didn't even think they need to protect her, like that at least would have been like the, the very, yes, yes patriarchal, but like, the loving aspect yeah. but they just literally forgot that other people yeah. were present well that so does I'm sorry i can't defend my boy that does uh, I, uh, do you have more i got one more okay go ahead well uh, my last one is this randall rockwell he comes into town and he does two things immediately one i cannot help you today but i am a handwriting expert is number uh, two you Everyone writes in cursive. It's 1920, Randy. You can't just decide. And then the, the the things he shows that are the same. I mean, it's cursive, buddy. This is not even like in the, this is a question of proof at best that you have here. And for him to lock all that up with Rosemary's help in the matter of 10 seconds was just crazy. Like just crazy. Sorry, that's all I got. It's time for Hopes and Valleys. It's where we talk about what gave us uh, hope for the future and or is bumming us out. Jax? Okay, so um, Aaron Craig Coe and Kevin McGarry did a press tour, and one of the questions they were asked was, will Lori be returning? Will Abigail be returning to Hope Valley? And Aaron was 
like very adamant about saying she'd love to have her back. They told the kid's story when she, um, when Lori picked up Kevin McGarry to bring him to his chemistry read. And you know what? Like, le- sure, let's bring her back, you guys. Men have have you know had redemption stories for for far less yeah. things. Not that what I think she did was right, but also I really want this for Gowan. I want this romance for Boy, Gowan. Yeah. Please bring her back. So that's my hope. Um, my valley is that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't really know what we're going to do in this episode either, other than the wedding. I hope that they don't steal May Mike's thunder and that they actually they let them have a lovely, we, they will. This, yeah, I this agree. season has not been building to a May Mike wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do steal. They never the thunder. had thunder to steal. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So my biggest hope is that, obviously, we just talked about how we were frustrated about the way that Bill... Uh, handled things with rosemary my my hope is that this season ends and uh during the off season here the writers of this here television show realize that they are sitting on gold with uh, rosemary and bill doing mystery stuff and that that is like that can they actually he decides like, Hey, I'm actually going to trust you 100% for it. Like I'm going to bring you in on everything. And then next year we get an actual real good case and we let them solve it. Yeah, no, I can't. Thank that's, you, that's the, that, that's just, let them yeah. solve it. Let's do this right. Cause I think, I don't know of anybody that didn't love the two of them working together this season. It was great Best part of the season. No question. Let's, let's run it back. Let's, let's run that particular thing back. Yeah. Next Careful season. With you Nothing else. There. No, we don't need to run yeah. anything else back. Nope. Just, that. Just that. Dan? Uh, yeah, I'm going to take this time to talk about Lori Lachlan because you brought it up. She, like, not only should she be back on this show, but she is in the last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, shows up, plays herself, makes fun of the incidents that got her in some hot water, and does it so perfectly that I I finished the episode and immediately was like, Bran, we have to get her on this show. She understands the bit. She gets it. She was so self-deprecating, so funny, so talented. And for all the jokes we make about Lori around here, I hope they bring her back, and I want her on this show, and that's really my only hope in a hopeless world of Wind Calls the Heart. And I just say, like, we're we're cheap, like, so it won't. Yeah, you don't have to pay us. Yeah, the amount that you would have to bribe us not a ton. Now, are we good at rowing? God no, no. But But. that's never stopped (laughs) before. No. Um, do we have any uh, what's called my heart emails, Dano? We do. Uh, it tells us calling your heart. Hello at deckthehallmark.com. Although if you send it now, it might be a bit before we get to it. This is from Kathy Lasota. Dear Bran, Daniel, Aaron, and Jax. Uh-huh. What's calling my heart? Bramble Fest. Boy, Woo! what an email. Man, it's like we... Bramble Fest! That's a good job, dude. Yeah, it's nice the Bramble Fest now. Yeah. Uh, all of us will be there. All of us will be there. All of us. That's right. Full disclosure, even though I listen to Wind Calls the Heart Pod episodes, I haven't actually watched the show since before Mounty Jack became Ghost Jack, although I'm still hoping season 12 will be the launching pad for Wind Calls the Mystery, which will find intrepid reporter Rosemary and retired Mounty Bill discovering Jack actually faked his death and has been living in the newly-ish founded town of Vancouver. I love this idea. <laughs> But I've been a part of the Double Decker community for a few years now, have met some amazing people, and those people have become friends. And now I'm heading to my first Bramble Fest ever, and we'll be able to see a good amount of them in person. Man, this is exciting. I'm uh, I'm maybe even hoping to convince Daniel to host a live history or his story. Either way, I'm really looking forward to tell to all the shenanigans the weekend entails and the donuts. Obviously, Merry Christmas, Cat. Cat, I've got good news for you at least. I'm going to do a history or his story. You you, uh-huh. you 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 talk me into it. Is that easy? <laughs> wow. yeah. you know what I just thought of too, and I'm adding this to my hope. We do have a Daniel Lissing, Aaron Craigo Christmas movie coming out this year. So he okay. is back in the fold. Oh, my good graces. That's right. So the ghost Jack that happened over on the other show that no one cares about over on another network is is now able, in theory, to come over to the Hallmark Channel and Winkle Zart. <sighs> That 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 would that would you know go check lives is what you're saying go check lives go check lives I I haven't seen 
that the the show, but Abigail's in it. I didn't actually see the thing with Ghost Jack, but Ab- like but Abigail's she was in only it. in that episode too, right? I, or she I, in it? I don't remember. I don't know. Like I don't know. Like does does anything in this season of When Calls the Heart even like uh, acknowledge that anything is happening over there? I don't. I don't. I don't know. But what they said they were doing was they said they were picking up season two of um, When Hope Calls. But all they did was shoot a Christmas movie that they said were episodes one and two, and they have not done the rest. Oh, yeah. It was a Christmas movie. Oh, That's right. With yeah. Ghost Track. With Ghost Track. I'm just saying, like, now that he's back in here, we like that that hope is now back alive. That Ghost Track could yeah. become a thing. I never I, I, I never stopped loving Ghost Track. I, I think you can do it. Like, I think they could do it, and it could be a thing that every once in a while they pull out Ghost Track. I love it. So he could give his blessing, do you yeah. think? Yeah. Oh, but they had such good chemistry. I think it'd be hard to watch that. That they, would be really they, hard. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Is, is we've they've everyone in that show has been after the high that was the Craco listen yes. chemistry. Yeah. Period. Like, go ahead, Aaron. Hello. Well, back to what Jack said earlier is we can't have like a happily married Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. She and Nathan are gonna get engaged. Ooh. We're gonna go along. But here's the thing: we never saw a body of Jack. I love. So this. we're not never bringing back up. Ghost Jack. I he finally he's been off somewhere with no memory. He got hit by a bunch of rocks. Oh, he's coming back. Just freaking oh. Elizabeth and Nathan not Dude. married again. And then she does <laughs> a full Jack. choosing thing again at the end of the yes. season. She chooses Lucas again. <laughs> it's gonna be unbelievable. And then we I make it to season twenty and. <laughs> No, dude, if they like, if they do that, if they bring back uh, uh, Jack, Best show ever. <laughs> oh man, I'm all in. I mean, you know, the only thing is Gowan is the work. bad guy, and Jack yeah. is alive. I love this show. I'm back. Oh, in. Gowan is a they bad guy. They can do it. Like they can do it. Like they, I will say the one thing that we learned with between this whole Lucas Nathan thing and her being with Lucas and then just leaving and saying I never actually liked you shows that this show is willing to Dude, soap whatever. opera it up. Yeah, like yeah. we yeah. can bring back Jack and we can have ourselves a good Maybe time. He has a twin. Ooh, oh my Jake. gosh, <laughs> Jake from State. Farm. Jake and Jack, baby. Jake, man, old Jake. This has got me excited for the future. Me too. I'm back, baby. I'm back. There it is. <laughs> Woo! Stupid. All right. Well, we got one more episode left, and then we're done. We're gonzo. We're out of here. That's right. For another year. And then we'll do it all over again, again. Again, again. <laughs> anyway, maybe the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks are able to get a podcast. It's produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo, go to philo.tv slash DTH. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi. But here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep, here they are. Happy day.